What's going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode on my channel. As always, I'm Jay and today guys I'm bringing you my thoughts and review on the pleasantly surprising Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles DVD is released by Warner Brothers in association with Nickelodeon pitting the Dark Knight against the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the first time ever aside from the original source material which was the comics and the first time that I'm hearing about it is actually in this movie itself so I am super excited to tell you guys that this was a very very good effort and one of the best as far as DC's animated universe and before I get too much into it I'm definitely going to be delving into some of the plot points and details so if you don't want any of that spoiled be sure to go and check out the video then come back but as always guys Let's dive into my review of the movie. I've read rumors about a supernatural bat creature in Gotham, but I assumed it was an urban legend. Ninja Turtles. We came to Gotham to stop Shredder and the Foot Clan. The man who will help us destroy this city is right behind this door. <laughs> Shredder and Ra's al Ghul have actually teamed up, and then Ra's al Ghul, who is having, again, delusions of grandeur and world domination intentions by manipulating Shredder and Baxter Stockman and the whole Foot Clan into stealing items that can actually cause a huge uh, city-wide kind of toxic event which turns them all into monsters or mutants. Now guys, throughout this film we are actually not skimping on any of the action which was one of the other highlights of this film. The animation was fantastic and you could tell that the directors and producers of this film had a great sense of action because whenever you've seen Batman and the turtles throw down, whenever you've seen the turtles fight the foot, Batman fighting the foot, uh, Shredder fighting Batman and so on and so forth there is nothing left to the imagination and then on top of that they have some great action pieces involving the Batmobile and the turtle van The voice acting is fantastic and in due part to Troy Baker who pulls double duty as the Dark Knight but also in his usual voice scheme as the Joker who he does a spot on impression of Mark Hamill. People might say that's a dig but that is fantastic because whenever you think of the Joker or whenever you think of Batman 90% of the people like myself who grew up in the 90s grew up with the Batman animated series so our Batman and Joker whenever we think about it in our voices has to be one of those two people. It's got to be Kevin Conroy and of course Mark Hamill as those two characters and if someone can kind of tap into that and actually, actually make us feel enthralled about it then that's kudos to the man himself Troy Baker who is tapping into that essence and really bringing something to the table yet again and aside from that guys I love the interactions between the characters I mean you had Batman and you had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles but then you had the little interactions with Batgirl and Donnie you had Raphael and Damien and then you had all of them kind of coming around and providing us something that again we never thought we would see on the screen he wants to use the league to tear down cities like Gotham and rebuild them in his image. Yeah, Ross obviously has plans for the mutagen your shredder brought into the city. Ooze. We call it ooze. Really? Ugh, I do not like that word. Ooze. Blah, gross. And speaking of interweaving the characters, they did a great job of melding Batman's rogues gallery into kind of this mutated form because at a certain point in the film, the TCRI ooze is actually given to them and they are actually merging it with the Joker's laughing gas. Uh, beyond that, there were some key players missing. We didn't have April O'Neil. We didn't have Splinter, which I really uh, would like to see if they ended up making more sequels for sure. And I totally think that they can go forward with these, uh, these films if they wanted to make its own line because Nickelodeon and Batman man coming together and teaming up to do the comic series again i believe it's in its third or fourth series right now if not past that uh and so far it's having a successful run and a lot of people are digging it and i really dig the way that this animated movie came together so if they got more for me i'm totally on board to end up riding the wave now again i'm not familiar with the source material so i don't know exactly how much of it it follows and what they ended up changing what they ended up leaving out because so far any DC animated film that I've really gotten into 
uh, as of late that is, has left out certain details, especially when we're talking about the reign of the Superman and the death of Superman animated films, which again, I thought were lacking and they aren't as good as some of my crown jewels, which include Flashpoint Paradox, The Dark Knight Returns, and even Batman Year One. But overall guys, I can't recommend this enough, especially if you are an animated series fan for DC. Definitely check it out because it is worth your time, especially if you are a TMNT slash Batman fan individually or collectively like myself. Definitely awesome. Give it a solid three out of five. It's one of the best, and I would say it definitely makes it into my top 10 favorites of the DC animated series of films that they've created for sure. It doesn't disappoint. It gives us awesome moments between all the characters, and this crossover definitely gives you what you want in terms of fan service for sure. But all in all, guys, that's all the time that I have for today. So if you enjoyed this review, please give a thumbs up and subscribe, and if you are subscribed, make sure you hit that bell button, that way you never miss an episode on my channel. But until next time, guys, I'm Jay. Thanks so much. Take care.